After microscopically looking at routine slides for a case, the pathologist will order appropriate immunohistochemistry testing on a patient sample. The patient sample is retrieved from the archives of paraffin block that has previously been treated with formalin fixative. Using microtomy, sections of the patient sample are mounted onto a slide. The slide must also contain a small section of known tissue acting as the control. The type of tissue used for the control depends on the antibody requested. It is common practice in most immunohistochemistry labs to have control slides already prepared in advance. After all these pre-analytical steps comes the analytical step. There are two techniques used for immunostaining, automated and manual. The protocol that an immunostain slide will go through is the same on both, and the main difference between the two is the convenience and reproducibility that automation provide. Slides will undergo four main stages, which include antigen retrieval, antigen antibody binding, visualization, and counterstaining. Each stage in the protocol is performed methodically and altogether involves nearly 40 individual steps. From a manual point of view, the preparation of numerous reagents beforehand is required, as well as incorporating the use of a number of laboratory instruments, such as micropipettes, coplin jars, staining racks, water baths, pressure cookers, or microwave oven. The first stage is antigen retrieval. Formalin fixation causes a reduction in tissue antigenicity. This step restores this by breaking aldehyde crosslinks that conceal the epitope binding site. This is achieved through a couple of methods, exposing the fixed tissue to high temperatures under varying levels of pH or through pretreatment with proteolytic enzymes. Depending on the antigen of interest, the slide will follow a specific protocol. For the antigens that require retrieval through heat, slides are heated in either a low or high pH buffer and heated using either a microwave, pressure cooker, or water bath. For the antigens required the use of proteolytic enzymes such as cytokeratins and immunoglobulins, heating is not required and a couple of drops of enzyme solution is added on top of the tissue and allowed to digest for a couple of minutes. The retrieval method of the antigen is selected and refined depending on particular differences between labs and their process of fixing tissue. Therefore, optimization is essential to maximize the yield of epitope retrieval. The second stage involves the binding of the antibody to the antigen. Endogenous enzymes are initially blocked with hydrogen peroxide to avoid excessive background staining. When this is achieved, and when the epitope is once again exposed, the primary antibody and the antigen of interest now has a binding site to form the antigen-antibody complex. A polymer detection system is added as a secondary antibody to bind onto the primary antibody. After each slide has undergone antigen retrieval, it becomes a matter of pipetting minimal volume of primary antibody to cover the surface of the specimen tissue, followed by secondary polymer antibody with steps of washing with a buffer and adequate incubation time at room temperature in between. Primary antibodies used to bind the antigen of interest have been pre aliquoted to an optimal concentration. The concentration can vary between antibodies, antibody clones, the vendor's recommendation, and even personal preferences of the pathologist. But the goal of optimization remains the same, where the signal to noise ratio is high and brown, routinely brown, but depends on the chromogen use positive cells are clear against a blue background. The third stage is visualization. A chromogen is used to allow for visualization of the antibody. Using a polymer system allows greater binding sites for the chromogen. The more binding sites for the chromogen molecule, the more visual amplification and greater signal sensitivity. DAB is the common chromogen in labs and gives off a brown hue. This signal is even further enhanced with the use of a DAB enhancer, such as a 1% copper sulfate solution, and is simply pipetted on top of the section of the slide and incubated for a few minutes. And finally, counterstaining to visualize the rest of the cellular architecture of the tissue and give the antigen antibody complex contextual detail. Hematoxylin is widely used as a counterstain that can stain for much of the cellular structure. Optimizing the counterstain is just as critical and is apparent when staining for semi-quantitative tests such as Key67 
or HER2, where intensity can affect the overall prognosis. After staining, the slide is dehydrated, mounted with a cover slip, and undergoes routine inspection. The section on the slide is compared against corresponding block, and the tissue control on each slide is microscopically checked to ensure the success of the testing. It is then given to the pathologist who initially ordered it so that they can report any clinically relevant findings or order any further testing. Conventionally, with the wider acceptability of automation, slides are simply loaded onto the automated stainer with the corresponding primary antibodies. The pre-optimized protocol is chosen and started and will take and an average three hours to complete. Manually, it would have taken a little longer as it required many physical tasks that meant inconsistent results. One small mishap could have resulted in a failure of the entire protocol. It is now possible to distribute reagents at consistent volumes, maintain the required incubation temperatures, and execute steps in the protocol at the right exact time.